How many times have you played Elden Ring? Well, to answer that question for you and me, too many times to count. And just like any FromSoft games, I have said this before in my last video, we don't understand the meaning of any of their games after your first playthrough. Maybe a little concept here and there, but not having the full idea that FromSoft is trying to present in their games. However, after your first playthrough of Elden Ring, carefully being mindful of the areas you have visited and understand the lands between Deep and Secret, you realize that this world at some point has some order. But now, the idea of order doesn't seem to exist in the land between. We sense that this world that we are in is destined to be controlled by chaos. We also notice that in the lands between, one of the major themes is accepting life and death. We see demigods that are part of the Fallen Tree shredding each other and trying to tune to each other's powers. Having power or being a mighty demigod can lead to catastrophic events, such as Kaelid, for example. Unless you're Godric the Grafted, you're just wasting your potential at this time. Like, do me a favor, throw yourself off the cliff. Your weird ass is not gonna become an Elden Lord, alright? Anyways. Before we go further, don't attach yourself to any of these characters because for whatever reason, FromSoft is obsessed with killing any character you interact with, especially towards the end game. This isn't just an Elden Ring thing, but we see this behavior in other FromSoft Soulsborne games, whether a character suddenly goes through some trauma events or dies. So if you ever have feelings for Fia, Two Fingers, or Bach, do yourself a favor and be prepared to grab a napkin, alright? I hope I am not taking up any of your time, but if you can show support by hitting that like and subscribe button, that would be awesome. These videos take time to make, and any support and feedback would really help me become a better creator. Check out my recent videos related to souls and my shorts. Back to the video. When we first play Elden Ring and open the door, we see how beautiful and sensuous this world is. It's astonishing, honestly. And when we take our first steps, there's always something very special about it. But venturing into the world of the lands between comes with despair, a loss of hope, revenge, and most importantly, greed. The thing about Elden Ring is whatever visual a player tends to see, it's more of an optical illusion. The first thing a player sees when they take their first step is the golden earth tree, and it's not evil. The golden earth tree has dominance, a ruling, and an order to follow, but most importantly, it's a symbol of life, presented in the lands between. However, there will always be chaos when it comes down to having an established order. While the earth tree's goal is to represent order, we have seen throughout the lands between horrifying events, war, power, dominance, and anything that the earth tree displays is an act of sin as well. We see the acts of sins happening. When you go to Mountain of the Giants, for example, or any other location in mid or late game, you start to see the evidence that chaos tends to bring. We see that merchants such as Kale were at one point they were shunned from the lands between due to their quote unquote beliefs. So they were gathered up and massacred nearby the Three Fingers where players inhabited the Frenzy Flame Chaos. We see omens, they are also shunned away because they are cursed-born. They have horns and they simply don't fit to be part of the lands between. This is why you see omen killers roaming around and you will find these omen-like verities hiding beneath the Landell capital. But in reality, how can we supposedly follow a ruling that an earth tree is trying to present but is very cruel simultaneously? For not having the proper alignment, you will be punished and thrown out of the society and possibly the underground where Mogwin's palace exists. We have witnessed the sins throughout the game. We follow this grace and while this grace will guide you to the main objective, it will also guide the player to other areas to make you witness and understand the events that took place and the lands between. We also know that demigods fight each other to gain the great runes, to gain power, and to have a chance at ruling the lands between. The thing is that this family is very dysfunctional. They're all related to each other somehow, but that doesn't stop one demigod from waging a war against another just for the idea of gaining power. Now, 
I do believe that there is another aspect of this game, which is understanding life and death. I think this is another central concept that the game is trying to exemplify in some ways, and most importantly, it is about understanding the cycle of life and death. We know that because of the Earth Tree's blessing, it's supposed to keep things regular and societal functioning. The Earth Tree symbol, as we know, is believed to give life and hope and continue to shine on new life. However, since Merica removed the rune of death from the Earth Tree, it seems like there was no death but life. Everyone was immortal. Since there is no control over death, there will be chaos, and we have seen how chaos came along throughout the game. Not to sound very sadistic or anything, but I think just the way we accept life, we also have to accept death. And having those two significant elements in our life is what keeps the balance, it's what controls us with our choice making. We can't change the outcome when it comes down to destiny. However, stealing the destined death and being unable to control that power has led to other catastrophic events, such as the Night of the Black Knives. After Godwin's death, America shatters the Elden Ring, leading other demigods to engage in wars and hunger for power. Now, I want to talk about the Shadow of the Earth Tree. I don't know anything about the expansion, so you don't have to worry. But hopefully this expansion somewhat conclude every answer that the players are looking for when it comes down to the lore. Like, for example, what is the actual purpose of the Earth Tree? What secrets will we discover that we don't know yet? Yes, in the main game we have found some scenes that could be very unpleasing and not normal. Clearly, there is more to be discovered. Melina, a companion of the players, is willing to travel with you to understand the Earth Tree more, and she even stated that the Earth Tree needs to be repaired. I feel like she knows whatever the Earth Tree is trying to represent is likely a false statement, and restoring and repairing the Earth Tree is much needed. I do feel like the Shadow of the Earth Tree will give us those answers, conclude specific lores, and possibly reveal the truth and the purpose of the Earth Tree. Yes, we have seen some chaos, but that's the beginning. In the Shadow of the Earth Tree, we continuously see chaos as Mesmer's central theme. We are still determining what Mesmer is trying to portray or the world we will eventually discover once Shadow of the Earth Tree drops. But the truth will eventually come out. But I feel like the moral of Elden Ring is that if there is order, there will be chaos. And it's essential to have a balance with life and death and being able to control your attributes. Thank you everyone for watching. I appreciate the support. Please remember to like and subscribe. It greatly helps me. Check out my latest three videos. Why Elden Ring is so special is one of the highest quality videos I have ever produced and I really worked hard on it. Another video, why I fear playing Souls games, relates to the FromSoft's catalog, and you don't understand Bloodborne. Please check them out when you can, and remember to rise up. It's time to prepare for the shadow of the Earth Tree. Have fun, everyone. Stay blessed and stay safe.